do you want to know how CEOs and high-level managers maintain their high performance? There is a difference between achievers and high performers. Achievers work hard to reach success. They fought many challenges. They keep on doing more. But there comes a point when achievers lose momentum. Their careers plateau. They feel burned out or lose enthusiasm. The problem is they cannot sustain success. They hold no principles to guide them to higher goals. High performers, meanwhile, can handle it all. They can do what achievers can do and more. High performers maintain their excellent performance. They do that without compromising their happiness or well-being. How can you be a high performer? How can you handle the demands and perks of long-term success? The secret is to learn the high performance habits. Brendan Burchard has spent many years on coaching high performers. He studied them closely. He did intensive research and interviews. Brendan found out that there are six main habits that define these high performers. That is what he wants to share in this book. You will learn those high performance habits and the best practices to achieve them. It does not matter what your background is. At this moment, you have every right to become extraordinary. Habit 1. Seek Clarity to seek clarity means to always know who you are and what your goals are. It may seem that these questions are basic, but they do have a great impact on your life. Being clear about who you are means that you know your strengths and weaknesses. If you're clear on who you are, you also know for sure what is valuable to you. Knowing yourself well brings about good self-esteem. In your journey to become a high performer, you must start with self-awareness. Seek clarity on your identity, your values, your good traits, and bad traits. They are your keys to having a positive outlook on life. The next thing you must do is figure out your goals. They should be clear in your mind. More importantly, your goals must be challenging. Challenging goals bring more energy, enjoyment, and satisfaction to your work. How often do you feel disconnected and frustrated at what you do? You need to remind yourself again of who you are and the goals that you want to achieve. What you can do is envision the future for. What are the future for? They are your visions for your future self, social interactions, service and skills. Let's first discuss your future self. The famous saying goes, know thyself. More than that, high performers can imagine thyself. If someone asked you, where do you see yourself 10 years from now? Do you have an immediate answer? High performers can answer that question easily and confidently. They have a clear idea of what they want to become. They have a well thought out idea for their future self and they are working towards it. The next one in the future four is social interactions. High performers have high social intelligence and situational awareness. This means that there is clarity in the way they interact with others. They have a clear idea of their position and how they want to treat the person they're dealing with. Think of the last phone call you had. Do you think you've chosen the right tone when speaking with that person? Try to remember the last conflict you had with anyone. Did you think about your values? In your conversations, do you make an effort to become a better listener? There is clear intention in everything that high performers do. They want to give positive emotions. They want to be a good example. Before communicating with others, they think of the tone that they should use. They also try to figure out how they can help the other person. Next in line are future skills. High performers have clear vision on the skill that they want to develop. They take their hobbies seriously. If they want to learn a skill, they train themselves to mastery. High performers are not scattershot learners. They don't pick up a skill and move on to the next. They aim for excellence. High performers plan around the skill set they want to master. They do not settle as generalists. They want to be specialists. For example, if a high performer is interested in music, he does not try to learn every instrument. He focuses on a single one. He would look for an expert teacher and practice hard. 
Last on the future four is service. Sometimes the reason why you feel uninspired or unmotivated at work is because you lost the sense of service. When you get caught up with your daily tasks, you sometimes forget who you are doing all of it for. For example, if you're a manager, you work far from the customers. What you must do is see the people you serve once in a while. You must listen to them and know how you can provide for them better. High performers are concerned about making a difference for others and the future. That is why they constantly give their best in the present. Habit 2. Generate energy. Energy for high performers is not only limited to the physical, they maintain an active body, but they also know the importance of positive emotions and mental alertness. High performers generate energy in a holistic way. They want to stay physically, mentally, and emotionally fit to take on their many responsibilities. If you have low energy, it can affect your whole lifestyle. It makes you feel down. It makes you weak against challenges. You feel like life is just passing you by. If you have low energy, people would not buy from you. They would not believe you, support you, or follow you in any way. Brendan Burchard found out in his research that senior executives and CEOs possess the highest energy. They are the most energized in any company. The energy level of senior executives and CEOs can be compared to the energy level of pro athletes. High energy brings about more happiness and success. Like CEOs and quarterbacks, you can achieve that in your life too. Imagine a power plant. It doesn't have energy as it is. What a power plant does is transform energy. Like a power plant, you can choose to generate more. Do not wait for something to bring you joy, excitement, motivation, or love. All those positive emotions can start from you. It is possible to generate high energy when you choose to. You can generate positive emotions anytime you need it. In order to do so, you can follow these steps. The first one is Release Tension, Set Intention. Brendan Burchard has coached many high performers. He worked closely with them. He observed that the cause of low energy among CEOs and other high performers was poor transition. What is transition? It is when you change from one task to another. The moment you get up from bed is a transition. You shift from sleep mode to work mode. You take a bath and prepare yourself. Maybe you get your kids ready for school. You take the public transport and arrive at your office. Those are more transitions. While working at your desk, you may be called into a meeting. That is another transition. When you get home and spend time with your family, you shift again from your role as an employee to your role as a dad or mom. Think of the transitions you go through within a day. Now, imagine that in one of your meetings, you had a conflict with your boss or colleague. After that, you have to do more paperwork at your desk. You may pass on the negative energy to your next tasks. If you don't take a break, you will feel worse as you go through your day. You lose your presence of mind. When you get home to your family, it may be that you will have no energy left to appreciate them. To avoid this from happening, you need to release tension. Before you move on to your next task, try to take a little rest. You can relax and close your eyes for a couple of minutes. Just focus on taking deep breaths. Once you have released the tension, you can start setting intention. Think of the task you're doing next. What do you want to achieve? How can you do it with positivity? The next step to generate energy is bring the joy. Positive emotions such as joy can bring so much difference in your life. Research shows that joy is an indicator of high performance. People who maintain positive emotions are healthier. They also have better relationships and more income. Those who bring the joy perform better at the things they do. They are more compassionate and helpful to other people. Neuroscientists discovered that joy and the other positive emotions make new cells develop faster. On the other hand, negative emotions cause cells to decay. 
This is not to say that high performers do not experience negative emotions. There are times when they get sad and feel exhausted, but the difference is that high performers can bounce back faster. They can cope easily with the negative energy. They can direct their thoughts and actions back to the positive state. Habit 3. Raise Necessity Raise necessity means to always feel the need to take action. You have to wake up every morning. You have to fulfill all your responsibilities. You have to perform well. If you raise necessity, you don't hope for the best or wish things to get better. You feel the need to act. You feel the need to do something. Necessity compels you to move. If you don't, you feel like you let yourself down. You are not meeting your own standards. You fail to accomplish your duties and obligations. Necessity is a stronger motivation. It creates urgency in you. Brendan Burchard often asks these questions to high performers. Why do you work so hard? How do you remain focused and committed? Brendan always gets the same answers. High performers tell him that it's just part of who they are. They cannot imagine being something else. They feel like it is what they're meant to do. There is necessity in their actions. They must act at once because people are counting on them. They don't want to miss any opportunity. High performers do not want regrets about things that they didn't do. What are the practices you can follow to raise necessity? The first practice is know who needs your A game. High performers always ask themselves whether they're doing the task the best they can. If you are in your A game, you give your best no matter how basic the task is. Brendan Burchard teaches this technique to his clients. It is called desk trigger. Each time you settle at your desk to work, ask yourself this question. Who needs me on my A-game the most right now? It is just a simple technique, but it would remind you to perform better because there are people counting on you. The second practice you can apply is affirm the why. To affirm means to declare with confidence. Why refers to the goal or purpose behind your actions. High performers always have a clear purpose in the things they do and they are proud to declare it to others. If you know someone who is very athletic, you will notice how happy they are to share their workout routines. They find great purpose in what they do, and they always affirm it. But although high performers are always confident about their goals, they don't declare that they are always right. High performers are open to new approaches, which will improve their performance. The third practice to raise necessity is level up your squad. It is one of the first advices that Brendan Burchard gives to his clients. In order to reach high performance, you must surround yourself with people who are very positive and successful. They will become your squad. Spend time with them. Talk to your squad often so that you will pick up high performance. Spend less time with people who give out negative emotions. You can level up your squad by meeting new friends who have more expertise than you. Habit 4. Increase Productivity Are there times at work when you are very busy, yet you feel like you're not progressing? The reason might be that what you are working on, what you are busy with, isn't really in line with who you are. You may be occupied doing something that you don't really want or something that doesn't match with your abilities. Have you ever been sick because of too much stress at work? It is possible to be productive without compromising your health or well-being. Many high performers can prove that. They work hard, yet they do not feel stressed. High performers find happiness and fulfillment amidst all their responsibilities. There is a way to be more productive while taking good care of yourself and your loved ones. That is what you will learn from this chapter. You do not need to be a superhuman or over-caffeinated to do more. Just follow these practices. The first one is to increase the outputs that matter. Do you always organize your emails at work? 
Studies have shown that people waste 28% of their office hours just sorting through their emails. Using the search function is more efficient than creating subfolders. You are not doing real work when you're managing your emails. You are not being productive either when you clear up files, attend meetings, or help with a colleague's false emergency. What you must do is focus on making PQO, or Prolific Quality Output. Prolific Quality Output is the best output that you can produce at work. You need to find out what your PQO is. That is where you'll focus all your attention and efforts. Being consistent with your PQO will make you very productive. If a task is not part of your PQO, it is better to decline it. Your prolific quality output is how people will know and remember you. Beethoven and Mozart are best known for their exceptional compositions. The Beatles released album after album of great songs. Here are more examples. If you are a blogger, your PQO is content. You must focus on writing more and giving more value. If you're selling cupcakes, you can choose the two best sellers and bake more of them. Even Steve Jobs had to drop some Apple products to focus on making the best ones. Find out your own PQO. Direct all your energy into creating and improving it. Now, are you the type of person who plans before making a move? Or are you the type who just wings it? If you're starting out a business, your innate talents might be enough to get you along. But as your business grows, it will be harder for you to handle things. You'll get lost with the many tasks. That's why it is important to chart your five moves. That is the second practice to increase productivity. Going along without a plan and just trusting your abilities will get you through, but just up to a point. When competition comes or when tasks became complex, your performance will start to fail. What is your biggest goal? You will encounter many challenges, so you need strategy. You need to plan step by step. To become a high performer requires thinking before acting. What is your ambition? What do you really want in life? What is your greatest dream? Make it clear in your mind. Once you've done that, you can chart your five moves. Think of the five major moves that will bring you to your goal. Next, you can break down those five big moves into smaller activities and deadlines. Then, you can chart those on your calendar. Chart your five moves can work for you no matter what your career is. Habit 5. Develop influence. Do you think you have influence to the people around you? Can you make them believe what you're saying? Can you make people follow you? Influence is the ability to shape other people's beliefs and behaviors as you desire. It doesn't matter what your personality is. You can influence people even if you're an introvert. You may think that it's entirely impossible for you to influence people, but maybe you just forget to ask. There are people out there who will be willing to help you. You fear rejection or judgment. How can you test your influence if you don't ask something from your co-workers first? You never know until you ask. Try to make a request to your child, partner, friend, or boss. If you failed the first time, don't quit. Eventually, you will get better at speaking up. And the people around you will get familiar with your ideas. Here are more practices so you can develop more influence. The first one is to teach people how to think. Imagine that you have a seven-year-old son. He is working on his math homework. Later on, you notice him getting frustrated. He says, I hate math. What would you do? You can influence the way he thinks about math. You have an opportunity to direct his thoughts. You can help him change his thinking so that he can improve and even enjoy math. Brendan Burchard advises his high-level clients to communicate with their people. They have the ability to direct how the employees think about their selves. Leaders should also direct how the employees think about the competitors and the marketplace as a whole. That is what separates high-performing managers from the rest. They take the opportunity to influence their people to think big. Imagine that you are one. You must tell your team, if we want to be the best, 
This is how we should be thinking about ourselves. This is how we should be thinking about our competitors. This is how we should be thinking about the world and the future. Another practice to develop influence is challenge people to grow. This may be the most difficult practice you'll learn from this book. It is hard to implement. When you challenge people, they may become defensive and tell you to mind your own business. High performers challenge those around them in subtle ways. They show that they have clear intentions to help. They carefully choose the tone that they will use. Why do high performers challenge other people to grow in the first place? Kobe Bryant once said, The most important thing is to try and inspire people so that they can be great in whatever they want to do. High performers want to encourage others to also aim for high performance. They give the challenge with honor and respect to the person. They make sure to communicate their sincere purpose to help. In that way, the challenge would bring about inspiration. Habit 6. Demonstrate courage. Courage does not mean saving humanity. It means making the move to begin change. To demonstrate courage, you do not need to do something groundbreaking. Even a small deed can make a huge impact. Mark Twain once said, Courage is not fearlessness. It is taking action and persisting despite that fear. What are the practices you can do to demonstrate courage? The first one can be to honor the struggle. In our society today, we always want to make things easier. We have the technology that frees us from much hard work. It is both a blessing and a curse. The trouble is that the present generation avoids struggle as much as they can. What is easy and convenient became the norm. Persistence, difficulty and effort are things of the past. It is accepted to quit school, friendships, jobs and marriages because of a few challenges. This way of living makes us weaker. It makes us vulnerable to real threats. To be courageous, we must be ready to face life's challenges. We must accept struggle as a way of strengthening our character. We must remember that there is honor in struggle. Hard work builds character. Without struggle, there would be no great leaders. The next practice to demonstrate courage is to share your truths and ambitions. Humans desire to be free. We yearn to show who we really are and share what we really feel. But we fear disappointment and rejection. Expressing yourself, therefore, requires courage. You should not think about disappointing other people. The only standard you have to meet is that of your own. Live by your own truth. Share your ambitions. High performers cannot be discouraged, especially by the criticism of others. Conclusion You learned the six habits of high performance. These are the habits that high performers do to take on extraordinary tasks. You also learned about the practices you can apply to achieve those habits. A deed or practice becomes a habit if you do it repeatedly. Try to apply these practices in your life. You can start slowly. Once you get used to it, you will see yourself improve. The first three habits are more on the personal while the remaining three will improve your social skills. Let's review the six habits you've learned. The first habit is to seek clarity. Under it, you learn to envision the future, four which are self, social, skills and service. The second habit is to generate energy. The best practices to achieve it are to release tension, set intention and to bring the joy. The third habit is to raise necessity. You learned how to know who needs your A-game, affirm the why, and level up your squad. The fourth habit is increase productivity. Under it are the practices increase the outputs that matter and chart your five moves. The fifth habit is to develop influence. You learn to teach people how to think and challenge people to grow. Lastly, the sixth habit is to demonstrate courage. To practice it, you have to honor the struggle and share your truth and ambitions. There is a quote from Virgil. They are able who think they are able. You now know that it is possible to perform like CEOs and extraordinary leaders. There are habits and practices that you can follow.
If you're a high performer yourself, you learned how to improve more and maintain your success. This book gave you the possibility. It is up to you now to take action.